Go ahead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. So he did what he said he was going to do. Go ahead. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. So he did. If you had that blood on your doorpost, everybody firstborn would die. All of them. And they died. And we'll look, look with how Pharaoh would respond to it. Go ahead. And Pharaoh rose up in the morning. Pharaoh rose up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. Oh, so they cried now. See, when you heard something that's close to you, like a family member, your firstborn, man, that thing hurt you too deep. And Pharaoh had his son there, he killed his son. Go ahead. For there was not a house where there was not one day. Mm. Go ahead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, get you forth from among my people, <laughs> both ye the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Yes, sir. He, he for real about it this time. Go ahead. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless, and bless thee also. It was said, bless him also. This was the first reparation right here. A Pharaoh funded the trip for Israel to get out of Egypt. He funded it. Just like in our day, we ain't got to worry about no passport. We ain't got to worry about no ships, no anything. We just got to recognize our transportation, and they're going to put us on it. And I'm going to show you. Go ahead. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. They were hearing, get y'all out of here, get out of here. That they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. <laughs> We'd be all dead, man, if y'all keep standing here. Because they seen the hand of the Lord. Go ahead. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, mm -hmm. and their needle throughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And so they took everything that they had in the house of, and Pharaoh gave it to most of Go ahead. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. I don't know why they said borrow, because they weren't going to go back and give it back to him. Right. No, he, they, they became rich that day. Go ahead. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of, of the Egyptians, mm -hmm. so that they lent unto them such things as they were as they required. Yes, sir. And they spoiled the Egyptians. They said, Man, can I have it? No, take the whole bag. <laughs> take all of it. Take all of it. Go, go ahead. Got all they needed and some more. That's why we were able to build the first ark of the, 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 the tabernacle. When, some, when they had, when they told when God gave them the instruction how to make the ark of the covenant, he used to shake with gold. That was funded by Pharaoh men with expensive sheets with their portable tabernacle in the wilderness. That was sponsored by Pharaoh men. Yes. All of it. They had to work. Well, they did work. They worked 400 years for it, but they got it in one day. 400 years on payment in one day. Just like it's going to happen to us. Go ahead. 37. And the children of Israel journeyed, journeyed from the Ramses to Succoth. Succoth. Uh -huh. About 600,000 on foot that were men. So besides it, children. It was 600,000 men. They ain't talking about women and children. It's men. That was a lot. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. Read 38, excuse me. Yeah. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. So let us so know, not only is Israel going to be in the land, it's going to be a mixed multitude of Hamites, Gentiles, Chinese, whatever you want to be. Because they're going to see, no, oh, the God of Israel is with them. Because they see all this instruction. People read the Bible more than we read it. They just need somebody to line it up. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. So we got one more after that and we'll be done. Isaiah 60. Let me show y'all how we're going to get to the wilderness. God wrote everything. He laid, he laid it out. He laid it. Gave us an open book test. But some of us won't read it. I used to be like that. Didn't want to read it. Till I find out about the hill. And then they go fire, I start to read. I can't go there. I can, but I don't want to go there. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 2. Let me show you 
Isaiah 16, verse 2. Let me show y'all our transportation. Go ahead. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So this is gonna be like the start of the tribulation period. The thing gonna start popping out where wars and all this stuff, darkness gonna hit the earth. Go ahead. And the Gentiles shall come to the light. Yes, sir. To thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. Lift up thy eyes round about and see all that all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. So the Gentiles preparing the way to for your sons and your daughters, and they shall nurse them by that side. They're gonna make sure they take care of you. Because they're gonna know who you are. They're gonna want a blessing from God. They're gonna know who you are. Verse 4, jump down to verse 8. Let me show you how we travel. Go ahead. Who are these that fly as a cloud? Uh-huh. And as the doves to their windows. What is that? That's an airplane. You talking about you talking about Isaiah? Isaiah ain't never seen no airplane. So he had to describe it this way again. A bird that has windows. God showed him the vision, showed the airplane, a dove that got windows. Ain't no bird in his day ever that had no windows. He telling him the future right here. This is how you're going to get to the wilderness. Go ahead. Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish. Now we got some ships here. What's on the ships? Go ahead. The Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, mm -hmm. unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. He glorified thee. He got, he got gold and silver on the boat. We're going to be taken care of. That's what people understand. We're going to be taken care of. You just got to recognize your transportation. When that third temple built, I'm looking around. Who gave them free trips to Africa? That's what they're going to say. Y'all want to go back to Africa? Yeah, I want to go and get close to that so I can run in that wilderness. Africa is just like, Africa is part of Jerusalem anyway, if you don't know it or not. There's no difference between Africa and Jerusalem. Just distance. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, last one. But Satan, just like Ramsey chased after the children of Israel, we can read that and try to kill them by the Red Sea. Satan will do the exact same thing. Revelation chapter 12, in verse 13, he's going to do the exact same thing. This is the blueprint, y'all. To the second exodus. This is what we're going to expect. It's going to happen. God said, I'm not a man that I would lie. I'm going to say today, yesterday, and forevermore. Revelation chapter 12, verse 13. Let's see Satan come just like Ramsey did. Go ahead. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Yes, sir. The dragon is who? Satan. Persecute the woman. That's the church, Israel. We going somewhere right here. Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Wait a minute. Two wings of a great eagle? What is that? A plane. To make sure we, that's our transportation. So I'm going to be giving planes. So I'm going to be giving ships to get over there. Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. Fly where? To the wilderness. To the wilderness. We read with some understanding. Go ahead. And to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. Wait a minute. How long is that? Three, Three and a half years or 42 and one, 42 months. Take your pick. We're going to be out there three and a half years. But say you don't stop there, man. Go ahead. From the face of the serpent. From the face of who? The serpent. That's Satan. We're going to be protecting the one to get in now. So I'm going to make it. Because they're going to be slow poking. Go ahead. And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters as a flood after the woman. Now understand, waters as a flood is symbolically for people. You read that in Revelation chapter 17 and 15. If you want the uh, water symbolize uh, people. 
He said, when Satan cast out his mouth, waters of a flood, he told them, go get them Israelites. They're trying to get them their land. And what God said? That he might cause her to be carried away of, of the flood. Yes, sir. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. Wait a minute. He said, the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened his mouth. How did the children of Israel get into the land in Moses' day? What opened up? The Red Sea. Who got killed in the Red Sea once they tried to cross behind Pharaoh, behind uh, Israel? The Egyptians. The water closed in on them. Same exact way. Go ahead. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And the dragon was wroth with Wait, wait, he said he swallowed up the flood, swallowed up the people. He killed them from chasing after him. But it's going to be some that they're too scared to go. Go ahead, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Wait a minute, why are you making war with the remnant of his seed? Remnant means that the last little bit that were hesitant, didn't want to go. He said, all right, I got some. I know some of them. They're keeping the commandments. I'm going to find them. What are you going to do? Go ahead. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. If you are not in the wilderness at this time, ain't no Sabbath club in hell in this land. Ain't, you can't buy or sell unless you have a mark of the, of the beast in your right hand and forehead. You can own all the cars, all the houses, but if you got one little thing hooked to you, that's taxes. I can pay my house off, guess what? He's going to say, all right, Jeff, you got to pay your taxes over $1,000. Well, here the money. No, no, let me see you marking your right hand and your forehead. Oh, I ain't take that. Well, I can't take the taxes then. Tax money. But it right here, man. This is how he's going to starve us. This is how we're going to be running for our life. You can't even buy food unless you have a mark in your right hand and your forehead. This is what God said was going to happen for the ones that get caught outside of us who try to go hard for their job and not going hard for their book. This is your destiny, right? Like you said, this is what you're going to be into. It's going to be into this. This place should be filled. If they knew what was coming, these pastors are keeping this away from them. They prepare them for the rapture, which is a lie. You need to be preparing them for the second exodus of Jesus. Thank you for your time. All right, we've got the thing here. We're going to take up, we'll read the announcements. Try not to hold you too long, but I, 